Hello and welcome to KRC's Dream Podcast, where we talk about politics, share stories from the community, and also provide practical advice. We will be podcasting every week, so please tune in. You can also access information on our website at www.krcla.org. I'm your host, Jenny Sun, and I am delighted to be here once again. This week, we're going to change up the pace a little bit, and I want to introduce you to Dane Lee. Hi, Dane. Hey, Jenny. How's it going? Yeah, I'm doing really well. I'm pretty tired today. How come you're tired? I came back from Washington, D.C. last night. I just flew in. Cool. What were you doing in Washington, D.C.? I was a participant in the the Time Is Now mass mobilization in D.C. with hundreds of other groups. What were you guys all doing there in D.C.? We were rallying for comprehensive immigration reform. Mm, That sounds fun. So who else was there? From KRC, I went to D.C. with Kevin Lee, and of course in Washington, D.C., we have our NACASEC friends. For those of you that don't know, NACASEC is the National Korean American Service and Education Consortium, our partners in D.C. Yeah, so we met up with Sona Yun, Sarah Kwan, Jane Yu, and Tong Yun mm-hmm. for, for the rally. And our friends from Chicago came as well. Oh right? yeah, Yongsan, Yongsan and mm-hmm. Boston. In Chicago, we have another branch called KRCC, Korean American Resource and Cultural Center. They're like the KRC of Chicago. So it was really exciting just to be with all three groups, um, representing all three organizations, NACASEC, KRCC, and KRC. Um, We also had the chance to do some legislative visits while we were there. Mm -hmm. Also, we were in a press conference led by... I think it was NCAPA. Do you mm-hmm. know what NCAPA stands for? What's that again? It's the National Council of Asian Pacific Americans? Yes, that's correct. Okay, yeah, you know, I saw a lot of great pictures from that event. I heard that there were something like 40,000 people there. Um, for folks at home who want to see some of the pictures, just check out KRCLA's Facebook page. It's just facebook.com slash KRCLAORG, I believe. I'm pretty sure there was more than 40,000. There was about 100,000 oh, really? people because... Mm-hmm. While I was there, I got there at noon. That's when the press conference started. And Deepa from mm-hmm. SALT led the... The South Asian Americans leading together. And we had Congresswoman Judy Chu, Mike Honda, and also Maisie Hirono come and speak about mm-hmm. the importance of immigration reform for Asian Americans. So was it an Asian American rally? It was an Asian American press conference, mm-hmm. and it led, led into the large mobilization. That's great. Yeah. yeah, I also saw the NBC clip. Our KRC organizer Kevin Lee was featured on NBC News in Washington, D.C. Yeah, many folks in D.C. still don't know that immigration is a problem mm-hmm. for Asian Americans. Right, right. And so they really wanted to talk to somebody, and they were able to get Kevin on an interview, and he really was able to talk about the difficulties and his own experience. Yeah, so, um, all right, I think I'm getting part of the story here. So you met up in D.C. with a lot of our friends from across the country. You did some rallies. You participated in some press conferences, made some noise. Um, if you check out the pictures, you know, I saw the really cool signs and T-shirts that everyone was holding up and wearing. Mm-hmm. And then you also mentioned something about legislative visits. What was that? Yeah, so the rally went on for hours and hours. It was really mm-hmm. great. I'm, like, really burned right now because I didn't realize D.C. <laughs> was going to be so hot. But it was exciting just to be among... All these different faces, there's Asian people, Latinos, there were African Americans, there's all sorts of people, and it was just amazing to be with with everyone. But legislative visits, Nakasek was able to arrange for us um, a visit with Congressman John Campbell, Mm -hmm. Ed Royce, and we also made a visit to Javier Becerra's office Mm -hmm. um, with John Campbell and Ed Royce. Unfortunately, they were very busy, so they couldn't meet with us, Mm -hmm. so... Kevin and I dropped off a petition signed by 1,200 Korean Americans. Wow. We collected 1,200 in a two-week span, wow. showing support for immigration reform mm-hmm. and also keeping families together. So we were able to deliver those, and hopefully we can get an in-person meeting the next time we're in D.C. Yeah, that sucks that we went all the way to D.C. That's 3,000 miles away, but they couldn't meet with us. How did the staff respond with the petitions, though? I mean, they were really amazed that mm-hmm. we collected so many in such a small yeah, amount of I'm time. I'm amazed too. Yeah, so I hope that both of them will make time to meet mm-hmm. with us. Wow, well, you know, it sounds like you had a really good time in D.C. I'm excited that we're really gearing up for immigration reform this year, and I can't wait to see what comes next. 
Definitely, I had a great time in DC, and I'm looking forward to going back on June 5th for the API mobilization in Washington. Also, I want to share with you a small clip from Kevin's speech. Thank you for having me here. My name is Kevin Lee. I'm a dreamer and an immigrant rights organizer at the Korean Resource Center in Los Angeles. I'm here to tell you that immigration reform matters to me, the National Council of Asian Pacific Americans, and many other immigrants. I came to the United States in 1999 from Korea and became undocumented. My parents only wanted the best for me and also to pursue the American dream that so many Americans in the past have aspired for. My parents worked hard every step of the way. However, I always grew up seeing them cringe in the face in the fear of law enforcement, even though they had done nothing wrong. They simply wanted to be a part of the society. On any given day, I was afraid that my parents would be taken away from me. As of now, I am grateful to be a recipient of deferred action, which allows some dreamers like myself to be able to stay in the United States at least temporarily. However, a pathway to citizenship is blocked for so many other hardworking, creative, and skillful people given the current immigration policies. Not only that, but a path to citizenship is not an option for many hardworking parents. I want to work hard, my parents want to work hard, and hundreds of thousands want to work hard and wish to contribute to the society. As an organizer, I talk to hundreds of people every week, and many people believe that it's the right time to push, to mobilize, and also to hope for immigration reform. We need an inclusive and immediate immigration policy that reunites families, and this is our chance. I want legislators to know that dreamers like me want, to, want a chance to give back to America, the only home we know. We need immigration reform now so we can fully contribute to this great country. Thank you. Thank you so much. Wow, Kevin's speech was really powerful. It was. Hearing it again, it really gives me chills. Good job, Kevin. You rocked that press conference. And also, I have a special treat for you. We were able to get some clips from Congresswoman Judy Chu. Mm-hmm. She's the... She's the chair of um, KPAC, right? The yes. Congressional Asian Pacific American Caucus. Yes. I mean, she's been really outspoken about comprehensive immigration reform, mm-hmm. and you can hear her here in her speech. Great. Yeah, I think she's been um, one of our strongest allies in Congress. And she's also the first Chinese-American woman in history to be elected to Congress. So, yeah, let's hear what she had to say. We need to have a voice in this process. In fact, immigration reform affects every community and constituency, and it is especially true of Asian Pacific Americans. Asian Americans are now the largest group of new immigrants coming to this country. We face some of the longest waiting periods for legal immigration, up to 24 years for for some who are trying to come here from the Philippines. And even though Asians make up 6% of the total U.S. population, we make up over 40% of those caught in family immigration backlogs. So it's clear that the impact of this broken immigration system is felt very keenly by those in the Asian Pacific Islander community. And our concerns must be addressed by comprehensive immigration reform. Did you- wow, that was a lot of passion from Congresswoman Judy Chu. I really love listening to her, and mm-hmm. anytime she says a speech, it really fires me up yeah. once again. It's really important that our allies in Congress really support the community's needs. Great, what's next, Annie? Well, like we do every week, this is our segment on services. Practical advice, really. This week, we're going to be talking about AB 540. And if you don't already know, AB 540 has a very interesting history behind it. Mm -hmm. Do you want to talk a little bit about AB 540's history? Sure. So basically, what AB 540 does is it allows eligible undocumented college students to receive in-state tuition at California state universities and community colleges. I think it's really significant because, as you know, education in itself is a human right, and there's also an economic case for it. Students who um, 
you know, grew up and received a K through 12 education in California will make so much more money if they get the chance to go to college too. Definitely. And then if they go to college, they can make more money and they can pay more in taxes. So there's both a human rights angle to this and a very strong economic case. So it's a very good investment that we make in our immigrant students. Right. And you mentioned that it began in 2001, but it's amazing how I still get calls from mm -hmm. Korean Americans asking, I'm undocumented, can I still go to school? And right. our answer is absolutely, you can mm -hmm. go to school. And so let me talk about the details on how to apply for AB 540. First, the eligibility, you must have attended high school in California for three or more years. And it, it can be non-consecutive as so well. So if you attended um, 9th grade, 11th grade, and 12th grade in California, you're eligible? That's right. Mm -hmm. And also, um, you must have graduated from a California high school or receive a California State GED or mm -hmm. a certificate of proficiency. Now, if you have these two requirements, you're able to reap the benefits of AB 540, which is in-state tuition. Mm -hmm. All right, that's really important because, you know, out-of-state tuition at UCs, it can run like over $40,000 a year. It's nuts. I mean, no one can afford that, but especially not most immigrant students, especially low-income and middle-class immigrant students. Yeah, it's really unfortunate that the qualification, for some people, it's kind of tough because it's three, three mm -hmm. full years, lots of people there. Right. I mean, especially with migrants, they go back and forth. But mm -hmm. at least this is an opportunity for many people to get benefits, in-state tuition benefits. And one other thing that I want to mention is that when you have difficulties applying for AB 540, KRC is the place that you can get help. A lot of problems arise when the student goes to the financial aid office or the school right. and tell them that they're undocumented. Mm -hmm. And from there, the school could ask for your passport and ask you if you've ever had a, a student visa. And deriving from those questions, you may run into some trouble. So if you do or you know people that aren't able to go to college because the financial aid office or the registrar's office has been giving them trouble, definitely give us a call here at KRC or email me, jenny at krcla.org. So if someone has a question about how to apply for AB 540, they just call KRC. What's the phone number? Uh, KRC's phone number is 323-937-3718 or you could, or you can go to our website at krcla.org slash en slash AB 540. There you can find some information on our website. Right. Actually, there's the whole PowerPoint step-by-step -step how to fill out the application. And there's um, the link that Jenny just shared, krcla.org slash en slash ab540 is the English list. But if you go to um, krcla.org slash ko slash ab540, you can also find materials and PowerPoints and step-by-step -step guides in Korean. Yes, a lot of people could get all of their information straight off of our website. But if you have any questions, we can still call KRC, right? Yes, that's correct. What's amazing is we have helped dozens and dozens of students that got their AB 540s denied. Mm -hmm. And we also have the help of Joanne Lee from the Legal Aid Foundation of Los Angeles. Right. And she's a very, very big supporter of KRC and, and she works really hard to help people. Yeah, I'm looking forward to hopefully having her on the podcast sometime. Me too. Great. So thank you so much for tuning in once again to KRC's Dream Podcast, and we'll see you next week. Okay, thanks, Jenny. Bye. Bye.